Hello everyone, this video will cover sections 3.1 and 3.2 from the book. Now from last time, uh, you learned how to take the derivatives the long way or using the definition. Well, this was the definition, you have this on the last, on the last test. And the very last example we did, so the last example, was this. I ask you to find the derivative of f of x if f of x was equals to x to the n. And then if you uh, recall this was equals to the, to the limit as h was to 0 or x plus h to the n minus x to the n over h and after a long tedious process, we end up with this, which I told you this will be now the easy way to to find derivatives. Okay. And this will work for any for any power power function. So here is the notation which you will use in calculus 1 calculus 2 and even calculus 3 and so forth so to write derivative you have two choices and depending on at least two choices for now and depending on the on the situation one is easier to understand than the other but both of them mean the same thing so for example if I say the derivative with respect to x of x to the n, then this will be n x to the n minus 1. Or the old notation was this you have x to the n, and then when we do the prime, so that means the derivative, remember, this will give you also n times x to the n minus 1. And this formula is going to be true for any power function where n is an pretty much a whole number it will work for any whole number positive or negative so you can say for, for now let's just say n is a real number yes any real Hence, from now on, you can use this formula. You don't have to go through the definition unless the question is asking you to do it that way. You should always keep in mind that these formulas come from here. So let me do a couple of illustration or quick examples. This is actually very, very, very easy now to do, you will see. So remember, before we have f of x equals to like x cubed. Here clearly the value for n is, is 3. So therefore f prime is going to be 3. So you put the n down times x to the 3 minus 1, which will be just 3x squared. And that's it. Or we could say what's the derivative with respect to x of x3, and this will be 3 x squared all right so you can see it's very very easy the only thing you have to make sure is that you write it in this in this form and the n doesn't have to be a whole number for example let's say that f of x is equals to the square root of x if you remember from um a pre calculus or algebra this is exactly the same thing as x to the to the one half so therefore here the value for n is one half so hence if you want to find the derivative this will be one half x to the n which is one half minus one and if we simplify that means the f prime of x you don't have to write the x unless it's also necessary because the x is implied so this will be one half x to the negative one half and technically that's the solution now if you check to what we did in the last 
sections, the derivative of this is actually equally actually equals to or written this way one over two x to the one half, which is one over two radical x. So you should check that this is the answer we got before the long long way. All right, so let's do a uh, many examples using this formula until this makes sense. This is the first technique or method. There is like four or five different techniques or methods you need to learn. Once, once you learn those methods, you can find the derivative of any, anything. And again, you will be using this all of calculus one, calculus two, calculus three, or any science that requires derivatives. We did this example and the long way in the section before we took the, the test in section 2.7, 2.8. Remember that this example is from physics where this represents the uh, the position and the derivative was the, the velocity. So S prime of T, so you have to take the derivative of each of them separately. So for the 16, so you have um, minus 16 t squared. If you do the derivative with respect to t of this, this will be minus 16 times 2, and then this will be t to the 2 minus 1. So therefore, this will be minus 32 t. And then the derivative with respect to t of t. Uh, notice that for this one, the value for n is 1, while this one, the value for n was 2. So therefore, this will be uh, 1 times t to the 1 minus 1. And remember that anything to the 0 power is equals to 1. So this is 1 to 1 times t to the 0, which is just 1. So therefore, the derivative of this is minus 32t. Uh, plus 4 times 1, which is 4. So therefore the derivative is minus 32t plus 4. So you can put the 4 here. So then it will be 4, 4, and the answer will give you 4. Or you can do a separate. Either way, it's fine. Now, remember that this represented the, this is the speed. So you take the second derivative, which will be now the derivative of this one. This will give you minus just 32 times 1 plus 0. Now notice, and this is very important to realize, that if you have just, let's say, y equals to 4, and you will want to graph this line, y equals to 4 is a straight line like this then what is the slope of this line the slope is equals to, to 0 so therefore the derivative of any constant is always equals to, to 0 so this implies that the derivative with respect to x or t of any constant is always equals to 0 which is related to this. You can see that the slope of a straight line has to be zero. Okay, so just remember that. All right, so therefore here, uh, the second derivative uh, is the acceleration. So the derivative of position is the speed and the second derivative is the acceleration. All right, so let's try a few more. All right, so here we have f of x equals to 1 over x. It will be a lot more efficient whenever you have these questions to write it in this form. This is the same thing as x to the negative 1. So therefore, here the value for n is negative 1. So therefore, the derivative with respect to x of 1 over x is going to be minus 1 times x to the minus 1 minus 1 which is equals to minus 1 times x to the negative 2, which is minus 1 over x squared. We did this question the long way. 
You should check that this is exactly what we got. All right, what about the, the square root of x? We did this one already in the previous page, but let's redo it again. Remember that this is the same thing as x to the one half. So therefore here the value for n is one half. Hence, the derivative with respect to x of x to the one half is gonna be one half x to the one half minus one which will give you one half x to the minus one half and you can rewrite this as one over two over radical x now depending on what you're doing in calculus one or in calculus two this may be more useful sometimes this is more useful so it depends on what you need you just need to know that this and this is exactly the, the same thing one case where this is way more useful than this one is that you have to take more more derivative so let's say that in addition to the first derivative you also want to find the the second derivative so therefore f double prime is going to be the derivative with respect to x or the derivative but the derivative was one half x to the minus one half remember the the not you have two choices for the notation this is the same thing as f prime or you could have done x to the one half prime remember that these two things are the same thing so therefore the second derivative is just the derivative of the, the derivative so you had to start over we're using the same formula so here we already have the one half for this specific case the value for n now is going to be minus one half so you're going to multiply this by minus one half and then this will be x to the minus one half minus one the exact same same rule so this will give you minus one four x to the minus three half and this is technically correct but the answer in the back of the book most likely will look like this one four times one over x to the three halves and this simplifies to um the square root of x cubed so it depends on how the question is being asked if you get this far most of the time this is good enough but this and this is exactly the same thing now the next example uh, it has actually three terms so you can um, simplify this into three different parts so this will be the square root of x over x minus x e to the x over x minus one over x now notice that this is the same thing as um, uh, one over the square root of x minus e to the x and then minus one over e to the x and if we rewrite this this will be x to the negative one half minus e to the x minus x to the negative one now uh, we haven't uh, talked about this yet so here it is so note the derivative with respect to x of e to the x is just e to the x so the power rule doesn't apply to this the derivative e to the x is just e to the x so technically this is the only function that is its own slope okay now uh we did this already in here what is this part this one we know what it is and this we did right here all right but let's pretend that we haven't done it and do the whole thing so therefore from here uh the derivative or f prime is going to be minus one half x to the minus three halves y three halves because it's minus one half minus one so just look to this part remember the derivative e to the x is just e to the x and then it will be minus the derivative of this one we did it here and was minus one over x squared so it will be times minus one over x squared 
So therefore, if we simplify all of this, this will be minus one half x to the minus three halves minus e to the x plus one over x squared. And this part can be simplified more the way we did it here, but this is good enough. But if we simplify, we will get the following. This will be equals to minus one four over the square root of x cubed minus e to the x plus one over x squared. And that will be the, the derivative. Okay, so just stop the video and check each of them before you continue to the next part. Once you are familiar taking derivatives, uh, one of the things that's going to be very useful at the end of calculus 1, but specifically in calculus 2 and so forth, is to find a formula for the nth derivative. So here now uh, we want the nth derivative. And this looks square at the beginning, but it's a lot easier than what it sounds. So this is what I mean. Remember that we have f of x is equals to 1 over x. And to take derivatives is much better to write it like this. Okay? So you can think of this as the 0 derivative. Okay? We already did the first derivative, but let's just check again. So remember f prime is equals to minus 1 x to the minus 1 minus 1 or minus 1 x to the negative 2. Yeah. Now, whenever you want to find a pattern, the best advice is not to simplify things, otherwise you will not see the pattern. Let me tell you what I mean by that. The second derivative, then, it will be the, the derivative with respect to x or the first derivative. And this is what I mean by not simplify. So if we find the derivative again, this will be minus 1, which we have already here, times minus 2, and then this will be x to the negative 3. Why negative 3? Because for this one, n is negative 2, and negative 2 minus 1 is 3. Okay? So then if we find the third derivative, which now will be the derivative of this one, so this will be now minus 1 that you have, minus 2, minus 3, and this will be x to the negative, negative 4. Now, after 3 or 4 derivatives, the pattern should become clear, and some of them are harder to see than others. But let's try it one more time. Now, the 4 derivatives, so usually you write a 4 instead of writing five, a 4 slashes, or 4 dots, or 4 primes, sorry. So then this will be minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, times minus 4, and then it will be x to the negative 5. Okay? By now, you can see the, the pattern. Notice that the first derivative is negative, the second one will be positive, negative, and positive. So it keeps changing from positive or negative. So whenever you, you guess the end derivative, uh, you can always adjust it and you get the beginning wrong. So it will be negative and negatively 1 to the n power. And notice that if this is 1 for the first derivative, so here n is 1, is 2, n is 3, and n is 4. So the sign so far matches. So if you put a 4 here, this will give you a positive value, so that's fine. And then notice that if this is the first derivative, this is one more than this. This is one more than this. This is one more than this and so forth. So therefore, this is going to be uh, 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 all the way to n. Multiplying. And then it will be x to the minus n plus 1. And technically you get this, you should be pretty happy. This is, the, this is the formula, which can be simplified a lot more if you use your pre-calculus skills, and you're gonna need to do that for calculus two. So therefore, a formula for the n derivative 
is going to be minus 1 to the n. All of this, remember, is the same thing as n factorial. Okay. So all of this, same thing as n factorial. And then this will be times x to the minus n plus 1, which you can rewrite like minus 1 to the n times n factorial over x to the n plus 1. So therefore for this particular um, for this particular function you wanted to find like the 9 derivative this will be equals to minus 1 to the 9 times 9 factorial divided by x to the 10 and that's it now uh, if you are bored and you have nothing else to do you should try this question so let's say f of x is just the square root of x and try to find so find a formula for the n derivative so this will take you a little bit of time and remember the key is to not simplify because here if we go to simplify one times two is two this will give you six it will give you 24 and you will not see the pattern so it's a lot better to leave it like this so just give a try to this one and you can do this you should be very very proud about yourself so it's not that hard but it's not that easy either okay okay so let's go now to section uh, 3.2 so this is section 3.2 and once you're familiar with this formula okay once you know how to handle this pretty well which is this so you can say this is formula one and formula two for now it will be the derivative with respect to x of e to the x is just e to the x uh, this one will get more interesting very soon you have uh, technically two rules to take derivatives but you're going to be using this over and over the first rule is called the product rule and you should highly highly I highly, highly recommend you to just memorize this. It's straightforward, but you need to memorize it. This is what it says. Let's say you have a function h of x, which is the product of two functions, f of x and g of x. So therefore, h prime is going to be f prime g plus g prime f. The best way to think about this is to look it at it this way and say the derivative of the product is equal to the derivative of the first one times the second one plus the derivative of the second one times the first one instead of using the f and g it is safer to remember that way but it's very tempting to just remember this which is fine but remember the most useful way will be this the derivative of the product is the derivative of the first one times the second one plus the derivative of the second one times the first one or if we use the other notation h of x will be f of x times g of x so therefore the derivative with respect to x of h of x will be the derivative with respect to x of f times g plus the derivative with respect to x of g times f. It's exactly the, the same thing. All right, so let's use the formula. Just keep in mind that all we're gonna do is use this or this multiple times. Okay, so for the first example, uh, this part will be f, this will be g. So according to the formula, f prime will be the derivative of the first one which will be 3 so that's the derivative of the first one times the second one plus the derivative of the second one which is just a times the first one okay and then if you simplify this is uh, 24x plus 3 
plus uh, 24x minus 16 which equals to a uh, 48x minus 13 again let me do this one more time in slow motion the derivative of this one is just 3 times the second one plus the derivative of the second one which is just 8 because remember the derivative one is 0 times the first one so that's it and then multi multiply simplify and gives you this much all right let's try a few more here now this will be uh f or the first one and this will be g or the second one so therefore um h prime or the x h so let me use this notation this time this will be the derivative of the first one so the first one is x squared times the second one which is g plus then the derivative of the second one times the first one okay. now the derivative of the first one is just 2x times e to the x plus the derivative of the second one is e to the x times the first one which will give you x squared and in this case you can uh, factor the um, x and it and also e to the x so it will be 2 plus x and this will be the derivative just like here this will be the derivative all right so let's look to the next one now so in this case uh this is f this is g or the first one or the and then the second one so we did this already remember the derivative of f prime of the square root of x actually maybe better to write it like this so remember the the derivative of x was equals to 1 over 2 radical x okay we have done this multiple times now all right so if we use the formula so h prime is going to be the derivative with respect to x of the first one which will be this <clears throat> times the second one which is this plus the derivative with respect to x of the second one times the first one okay all right now the derivative of the first one is going to be 1 over 2 radical x minus 2x times this plus the derivative of the second one which will be 1 over uh, 2 that radical x plus 2x times uh, the first one which is radical x minus x squared now if we distribute you will get a uh, one half on this one and then uh, plus uh, one half radical x times x squared then minus uh, 2x radical x minus 2x cubed for the first part and then from the second part you want to have one half minus of uh, 1 over 2x x squared plus 2x radical x and finally minus 2x cubed so this uh, this gives you this much and this gives you this much notice that here you can cancel uh, this will cancel this one this will cancel them so the thing you have left it will be a one half plus one half which is one and then minus four x cube so it will be the derivative okay so one half plus one half 
Let me give you one. Okay, notice the following. This is a very uh, good observation to see. Notice that in this particular case, h of x, if you distribute, will give you x minus x to the 4. Okay, you should check that. Radical x and radical x will give you x. The middle terms cancel because there's a difference of squares, and x squared times x squared is x to the 4. So therefore, the derivative will be equals to just 1 minus 4x cubed. Okay, so before you get mad and are like, well, why couldn't we just do that? Well, the thing is that if you had to multiply this like 20 times, you are not going to be able to do this this easily. So for now, uh, you should check that that's the case, that if you distribute, if you can distribute, you should, and this answer and this one should match. The thing that you need to understand is that once the problems get more complicated, you will not be able to multiply. So you have to do it this way. So that's why you have to get used to doing it this way. The same is actually the case for, for the problem here on the, on the top. If you would multiply uh, this here, h of x will be 24x squared and then this will be uh, minus 20, uh, uh, minus, no, 3 minus 16, which will give you minus 13x, and then minus 2. So therefore, h prime is going to be 48x minus 13. But again, you cannot always distribute. So that's why you need to know the product. The product rule and the caution rule, which we're going to do right now, are one of the most important things for you to learn in calculus. So it's very, very important that you know how to do it. All right, so now that you got the product rule, so let's go to the caution rule. Now, the caution rule says the following. So caution rule. If uh, h of x is equals to f of x divided by g of x, so remember that caution means division, then h prime is going to be f prime g minus g prime f over g squared. So this is not a derivative, this is the, the square. Okay, let's try an example using the caution rule. Here uh, we have, this is f and this is g. For the caution rule, sometimes it's better to do the derivatives separately and then just plug it into the formula. So from here, we have that f prime is going to be 2x plus 1. And the g prime is going to be uh, 0, the derivative of 9 is 0, and then the derivative of minus x is minus 1. So therefore, the derivative is just minus 1. Hence, from here, h prime is going to be f prime, which is a 2x plus 1, times g, which is 9 minus x, then minus g prime, which is minus 1, times f, which is x squared plus x, and everything divided by uh, g squared. So in this case, this will be 9 minus x squared. And then just uh, simplify. Okay, so make sure you do that part. So I'll just leave it up to you to simplify. Simplify the top as much as you can. This is just algebra. Here minus and minus become plus. So this will be just x squared plus x. And here you just use foil, combine like terms, and that's it. Okay, you didn't get the last one. This is a chance to redeem your sins. Okay, so this is f. This is a g. So remember, f is equals to 5x. That implies that f prime is 5. g is equals to x squared plus 1. So that implies that g prime is just 2x. All right, so therefore, h prime is going to be equals to f prime, which is 5, times g minus g prime, which is 2x times f, and everything divided by g 
square. Right, so this one is a lattice to simplify, so this will be 5x squared plus 5 minus 10x squared divided by x squared plus 1 squared, so therefore this is uh, minus 5x squared plus 5 divided by x squared plus 1 squared. All right, so the last problem is slightly different and more interesting, but you still have to use just the product or quotient rule. So here, notice that the derivative is this, but more importantly, the thing you need to notice is that this is a, it's a product. So you have to use the product, product rule. And here is telling you that f of 2 is 10, and you want to find the second derivative evaluated at 2. Okay? All right, so here, f double prime is going to be the derivative with respect to x of x squared times f of x and notice that this is a product and that's why i told you earlier that using f and g can be sometimes confusing but in this case uh, you can just call this g of x and you can say this is the first one and this is the second one so i know that's a little confusing but it's easily you look at it that way or we can write it this way and it probably will be easier to follow. You can say this is equals to f of x times x squared, exactly the same thing. And now this will be the first one, and this will be the second one, so you can call this one g of x if you want. All right, so therefore the derivative of this will be the derivative of the first one times the second one, plus the derivative of the second one times the, the first one. Therefore, this implies that f double prime of 2 is going to be equal to f prime of 2 times 2 squared plus 2 times 2 times f of 2. And so far, 2 squared is 4, so 2 squared is 4. So therefore, this will give you 4 times f prime of 2 plus 4 times f of 2. And we know what f of 2 is. f of 2 is given to you. It's right here. f of 2 is 10. The only thing we still need to figure out is how much is f prime of 2. But notice the so notice the f prime of 2 is the same thing as 2 squared times f of 2, which would be 4 times 10 because f of 2 is 10, so this is 40. So it will be 4 times 40 plus 4 times 10. So this is 160 plus 40, so this will be 200. And that's it. All right, so just to recap, from now on, you can take the derivatives uh, the easy way, which means to use the rules we learned in Chapter 3. You still need to be aware I need to know that a derivative is technically a limit of the difference quotient. So you still need to remember that for a long time. But if the question is just to find the, the derivative, then all you have to do is use the rules from traction 3.2 and 3.1, and that will make life a lot easier.